My name is Dr. Pedro Portillo. I've been a member of the Holy Tabernacle Ministry for 19 years. I started out in New York. I came here from Trinidad, West Indies for the teachings of the Grand Master, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Since then, I've been through the many schools of higher learning as a member of the Holy Tabernacle Ministry. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce God in person, our Grand Master, Dr. Malachi Z. York. And this is why 
And anybody that ain't traveling, you'll find in most countries you go and everybody speaks more than one language except America. There's one of the few countries where everybody speaks one language. And you are born of Latino or Hispanic descent, they will try to make you stop speaking Spanish. Won't give you a job. The few will let you speak Arabic, Amharic, whatever your language, they want you to stop speaking it and speak English to get your mind trapped in English. Because they control the phonetics of English. They control the emotional state of people by English. If you're watching television, they can't subdue and seduce you if you don't want to say the <laughs> So it's important that they concentrate you. And when they say they want to introduce to you Ebonics, <laughs> that's reverse psychology. Right. They're doing that because this will make us <coughs> feel against Ebonics. <coughs> And try to make us go to court to enforce English. Mm. And then when Ebonics, listen to me close now, once Ebonics has been overthrown, then they can come back and say, now what about Spanish? Mm. Uh, uh, they, they've been trying to make this country one language. You understand? But we got too many immigrants, too many different languages. So the only way to get a call came to Congress to get all these other languages out without looking like they anti-United Nations is to fabricate something called Ebonics. And I, I know and you know we really don't want our children talking about it. Uh, you know. So we will come out for a good fight if we like to start a little bit <laughs> So we will come out and start protesting by the middle of the summer about Ebonics. And once it's entered into the law, that English is the standard language of this country and that we don't need dialects, then what will they do? All the signs in Chinatown have to be changed to English. Everybody who comes in the country from, let's say, the Dominican Republic or Cuba has to learn how to speak English. About that, we want to hear the word that's that one more. Yeah, nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> the language. You now, who, who, who's doing that? Who's doing it? Not the Jew. Because the Jew falls into the bilingual game. He still has his Yiddish and his Hebrew game spoken. But he lost the country. There's a war going on under your nose that you don't even know anything about. The blonde hair, blue eyes are fighting the red hair, green eyes. The Irish, they are now fighting the other Caucasians. Look on television, all the women got their hair all of a sudden. What happened to the beauty blonde hair blue eyes? They lost the country. The Jews bring in the blonde hair blue eyes because the Jews are Hitler lovers. The Irish aren't. See, the Irish are cowboys. So now the country's saturated with what? Country Western music. I tried to get y'all up there when it was happening by putting on the cowboy clothes, so when the transition came over, it would bother y'all. Oh, I'm thinking the cowboy, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, I, I knew what I was doing, it wasn't no coincidence. I, I watched the transformation, I told you people around me, the country didn't wear the ship hand, the Jews have lost power. The Irish are coming back to power. The Irish hate you more than anybody. They were the ones who just come here with jealous because you got the job. But yet, he got the dirty job when he came here. But they wouldn't give you a dirty job because you cost too much money. <laughs> so they wouldn't let you go climb up in, on the bridges way up and high. They said the Native Americans and the Irish are there. They wouldn't let you work inside the mines or mines would collapse and you would die. And you cost some money, slave was expensive. And you know what the sponsor was saying, Faye? <coughs> Sears. Sears and Lua. Their first catalog was a catalog of slaves. <laughs> It had nothing to do with what Sears has right now. The whole catalog Sears set up was the person who made a catalog selling different type of niggas. Mm. I can get you if you don't like any niggas you want on short catalog. Let me say that. Sears don't look like a catalog of really what it was. wake up, there's a massive deception going on. We don't have the time to play. The best thing that's happening to us right now is the fact that they're beating happy hell out of each other. They're going off. I told y'all, listen, and they're losing their mind. They're getting turned on. Because if anyone walked, if anyone walked into a store and 
said, I want to buy a hundred pounds of diamond. Before we got down the block, I was all over. But I can't like what I was talking about. Okay, they can go over there and buy anything they want. That's real. And it's uh, the trick is again, the new world order is when they came in and a different system of belief pertaining to the life. They follow that? Then they set up the orders, the Knights of Columbus, the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, the Alhambra, the Irish Shrine. All of these are the orders that we're talking about when they speak of the new world order. And the Prince Hall Lodge of Black Union. They're not telling you none of it. I know that I walked through it, the whole way, the whole, and the thing. I walked through it. <laughs> and I walked through it knowing more than they were teaching. Looking at it. And then watching the game. They don't tell the Prince Hall makes it nothing. They got to walk through that archway before they get any information. They walk through that world arc after they ask them do they want to get something into the higher one. And the new game, they don't tell you yet. But if you go back and look at the Shrine of Manual, when the first movie was inducted into the Shrine, there was 130 of them, you know what it says there? 130 Nubians, not black Americans, was inducted in Chicago in the 18th century. Right in the manual, 130 Nubians, not Negroes, not Moors. You got Moors all the way. Well, that's us. Not Africans, which is Nubians. But they literally have in the Shrine Manual, Nubians. You understand? Know and if they, are, if they are the elite of intelligence of all their society, women, then they see you as Nubians. When you step out of the realm of ignorance and into the light of the Freemasonry, when you came out the desert sand, you follow that and stand on solid ground, then you become a Nubian. Now, don't believe me, go ask the shrine and tell the truth. I'll go look it up in Chicago in 1875 when they first had their first meeting at a Mecca Mall. They call it. Oh, and they say 130 million. Why would the shrine and the Freemasons, the, the elite of intelligence on earth, refer to that movie if you're, if you're a Shante, if you're Islamic Hebrew, if you're a Hebrew Israelite? Why would they say Nubian? They know the culture is around Nubian. Why would Marcus Garvey raise a Nubian flag and then tell you all the black American flag? He raised a black, red, and green flag. Or a red, black, and green flag. And if you go to Nubia today, in Aswan, in Karnak, in Nubia, in Lower, what they call Lower Southern Egypt, but good enough, you go there today and go amongst the Anglos, you see a black, red, and green flag with a white chair and dress on They were using it for Mr. Mock's time, who was born in 1845. Right? So that flag was over there in a place called Nubia or Sudan before Marcus Dami got it from Bruce Ali, who was a Sudanese who was living in Egypt as a gentleman. So Bruce Ali, he was a part of the Muslim club. The teachings of Mahmoud Dabi, Noah Dwali, Master Prophet Muhammad, Daddy Graves, Father Divine, all of them were going to have the same lodge. The Sultan Lodge, they call All of them were the same lodge. They built the same Masonic temple at the time of all the art of the temple in Chicago. That's where the nation of Muhammad had first meeting. All of that is there. They referred to you as Nubian. That meant Egyptian. Nubian, covered Hamite, Kushite, Mizraelite, Putite, all that Bible, all the Bible tribes you find in Genesis chapter 10, they were calling you that. You want to call yourself Israelite. Israelite is another one of the words. Isis, Ra, and El. Is, Ra, El. Isis, Ra, and El. They don't use Isis. They use Inanat. Ishtar. Dina, 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 the symbol of the crescent and the star, the Danites, the Danites, the crescent, Sa Samson, a Danite. What was Samson's mother's name? Merab, Hebrew, Merab. You know what that is? Mary. She was a virgin. Read your mind. She gave birth. As a virgin, but the Hebrew word meant young woman. 
and he was to save his people. He had supernatural strength of God incarnate, of Nazareth. The Bible says, Jesus of Nazareth. And his father, whose name is Manoah, came home and asked his wife, how did you get pregnant? And she said, an angel came to me and impregnated me. Mm. And he didn't believe it. And you think I'm telling you stories that you can't read? It's in Judges. Read the 13th chapter. It's there. Read that and you see it. He came and went out and looked for the angel and said, did you impregnate my wife? Doesn't that sound like the same thing that happened Mary? And Joseph? And you think that when you look in your book of Luke, or when Jesus was back in Jerusalem at age 13, right? Teaching in the temple. What did Mary say to him? Does anybody know? Yeah. Why have you done this to me and your father? Jesus. And Jesus' answer was, you know I must be about my father's work and my spiritual father. But Mary did not say, why have you done this to me and your stepfather? Mary said, why have you done this to me and your father, Jesus? And Jesus says, if you know I must be about my father. But what father was he talking about then? He was not talking about the father of earth, but he said, our father who art in. He was talking about his heavenly father. Don't we all call him our heavenly father? But Mary thought Joseph was the father. Not Jesus. So, now Mary, the one that got pregnant, and Mary gave birth to the child. Mary identified Joseph. Again, when the when the uh, when the Nazarite came and they said, Who is he? Oh, he is the the carpenter's son. <laughs> Joseph the carpenter's son. The people around there who lived around Jesus said, Oh, you are Joseph's son. That's Joseph's boy. <laughs> they didn't think it that way. I'm saying that to say, when are we gonna get it back? When are we gonna give them back the service? About when are we going to stand on our own feet and do some research about ourselves? And I bet you, please don't get mad at me because I'm talking about your body. But I bet you, standing here, and not one of y'all to stand up here and walk the Bible with me. I bet you, I'll start from Genesis, but you want to know the first word. <laughs> don't get mad at me because I'm your brother. I'm the brother sent here for you to straighten out this mess. Because you know how bad it's getting? It's getting so bad that we got Yahweh and Yahweh over here, my brother. Marathon over here, my brother. Reverend Price over here, my brother. And all of them are pulling us in different directions. And everybody is right. Everybody is so right and exact because nobody puts them on the spot. We got Muslim sex multiplying in America. Shia, Sunni, Ahmadiyya. Now we got the Baha'i. We got the Moors. We got the Ansar Allah. Then each one of those sects of Sunni break up into schools of thought. You understand? We got the black Jews, the Hebrew Israelites, the Israelite Hebrews, the Hebrew church. Then the brothers who went over to with Ben Ami and Kata, and they're over there living in the Jew, getting abused. Then we have our brothers, the Rastafarians. And then the Ethiopian Coptic Church. Here for America. What is it? Diversity. Divide and conquer. They keep putting us down and nobody stands up. No one stands up and points the finger at people. You know why? Because if I stand in front of a Muslim brother of mine and start pointing the finger, he wants to hurt me physically. Or he sends out some clone or some nerd who says, we got to kill that man. Don't kill me. Prove me wrong. Let me live. Prove me wrong. Not that I want to live with you. <laughs> so I know you're killing me because you want to shut me up. Because you think if you shut me up, I won't get to the people. But I will reach my people in time. This move is a waffle. This move is a waffle. Movement on the planet right now. We just opened up a new temple in Ghana, in Nigeria, in South Africa. We are spreading everywhere now. We just opened new in Barbados, in Haiti, in Jamaica. And they don't hear me. They won't let us get in the people yet, but we're on our way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit touchy right now there. They won't let you in. 
It's all right. And they're afraid of you. You know why? Because I'm not a leader of reading funkies. I'm a teacher. So stay out of my house. And stay out of my business. But you can never follow any of your school teachers going to get in their business. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to talk about the scandal of death holding him down. And he don't make no mistake. That is his prerogative. And you have a right to get in his business then. Because he's saying, I'm so holy. I'm so spiritual. I'm so righteous. I can't make any mistakes. Then you have every right to question. But a person stands up and says, I am your brother. I shoot the basketball like a miss the rim. You with me? Like I just did so funny here. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to approach this thing this time, our last time, for a different act. The approach this time is not for no preacher to stand up and start preaching to me about stuff he does not under all understand. I came in dismantling the language for you. But little things like you no longer want to understand anything. You want to now overstand things. People say, what do you mean? There's no such word. But there's a, a word oversight though, huh? <laughs> there's an undersight in English and an oversight. But when I introduce the word overstand, and you say, no, you can't do that. Why can't I? You did it. <laughs> in other words, I have to wait for you to create it to use it. No, 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 no. I'm not here. You with me? It's time for you people to question your leaders, question your teachers, question, question, question. I have never said believe me. I said the word believe is to lie to Eve's children, to be lead. Lie to Eve's children. Where that happens at? Right in the book of Genesis, where they say the devil is going to be out for the seed of the woman. She's out for our woman. He got be. He's out for our woman. If he can tear her down, he can tear us down. But they are back on the bad news of sin, y'all. And if you go back to ancient Egypt, you see the woman was the back home. When did he turn us against our women and against our men? <coughs> when he's not against him, but this woman controls him. Put the wife in charge of him. You with me? So this is day and time when you have to open that mind and start to question people. And don't care who gets mad at you. When a Muslim stands up and says to you, I shall have a lad in the hand of Allah, what's the last week of Allah? Say, wait a minute. Hold it. What's the last week of Allah? What does that mean? Boy, a brother means out there when there's no God but Allah, and he alone has no party. Let me see that word for word. Let me see where you got that from. And why do you have to say it? Why do I have to say that in the hand of Allah? Why do I have to keep saying it if it's true? <laughs> why do I have to establish that there's only one God if there's only one God? You understand? Is it natural? It ain't natural. <laughs> Thanks. 
leave this be alone. Because that's what y'all like to think. By the way, when someone sounds like they're saying something, oh, you're going to say Jesus. You wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm Jesus. I am not Jesus. I could not be Jesus. You understand? Because if I was Jesus, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It would already be over. <laughs>
excuse me, sir, we're talking about my soul. I'm not building a house. Don't give me a <laughs> Don't give me no metaphor. Talk directly to me. I'm a spiritual person. I don't need to hear a metaphor. I need to hear a fact. <laughs> what is Islam going to do for me as a people in a Christian country but get me hit upside the head? <laughs> Come down and make a lot. Pray. I'm in the middle of work. I can't walk up to this non-Muslim <laughs> boss of mine and say, excuse me, sir. But, uh, surround 12 o'clock. <laughs> I gotta make salat with them. You say, what? I gotta make salat with them. You know, salat with them. My new bread. They make new bread in the butt like a walk. Oh, I'll be fired. Come around to Shaq of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. I gotta fast for 30 days. How am I gonna be a construction worker? Swinging a sledgehammer. <laughs> And I'm hungry. And I'm thirsty. Is this practical thinking? No, 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 no. It don't work for us. It's a beautiful gesture. It is one of our cultures, Islam. It was ours when it was pristine and pure. But when those demons got into it and turned it into the sexism and the cult, and now you know what they do? They beat each other up. <laughs> you're up, fighting your own. We wasn't doing that in our religion. And Islam wasn't fair. It came to us from our brothers on the other side who brought it over there. We were already there with cultures. We were Yoruba. We had our family Arishi, Ogun, Obadala, Yemenia. Our families, deities that were us, look like us, walk like us, talk like us, and live. It also meant something to us and it meant something to nature and surroundings. Don't they did that? They turned that into devil worship. They said, if you, if you, if you, if you say that you acknowledge the sun for all it gives you, and the water and the sea, and Mother Earth for growing the food, you know what they say? Oh, that's, that's that new age song. You have something wrong with you. <laughs> but I have to say that I believe that a woman was walking through Jerusalem, minding her business, and an uh, apparition in the form of a spirit who they gave an Egyptian name because you know Geb is the father of Osiris. Geb, G-E-B. Now add the L on it. Gabriel, okay? <laughs> and Osiris was the father of Horus. And Horus means horizon. The sun coming up. Resurrection. You know, you die when the sun sets and you rise when the sun rays. Something that does not really happen, so it's a metaphor to an incident. Because we know the sun does not set. The planet's moving. There's your Jesus story. <laughs> Again, the strongest form of dispelling us is to pull us away from the realities of ourselves. And give us something we think is helping us. Because you know what? Your great-grandfather said, give me that old time religion too. Your great-grandmother said, give me that Jesus. That Jesus will help me. And he did not stop the KKK from crucifying or hanging or castration. Their great fear of penis envy. You know where it comes from? You want to know? Did you do something? You promised to research it? Huh? It comes from the temples of Karnak. Karnak. Okay. You know, they might have to get dictionary at the sea to make it different. That's way down in Luxor, where the new beings are. And it comes from the god Amun. Amun. Called the hidden one. You with me? You got that? Amun? Amun's other name was Min. M I N. Min. <laughs> You understand? Write these things down. This Amun, who's also called Min, his deity was called Hu. The creative force of will in ancient Egypt. Hu. Who? When you put Hu and Min together, you get human. And it's an Egypt, but not in Christian. But it's there. Don't, don't, what am I saying? Don't believe me. I ain't finished, though. <laughs> in his temple, the biggest temple in all of Egypt built by us, on the walls, they show men, are we talking here? Yeah. Yeah. Standing there, 
in his hand was a frill, and in his left hand was his penis. Did anybody know about that? Yeah. It was a symbol that men who was Amun, like Ra, Amun Ra, was responsible for original creation. Here's how they, here's how they were in ancient Egypt in the Mystery Tablets. That nature was at a tumbling force beyond gender. And with inside nature, a deity arrived. This is, this is, this is a story you now. That's how it happened. Right? And that deity was alone and wanted to create from itself. So it took itself in hand and spat forth the seed of life. Hmm? Oh, this is written in our writings. And they show statues of him standing there, a proud, strong man with a frill in his hand and his penis in his other hand. Hmm. And all the priests of Amun. They met in the inner center, sacred temple, three degrees in. The courtyard, the middle chamber, and the sacred or holy of holies. Sound like a Masonic Lodge again? That's right. And in there they had what they referred to as reproduction symbols. And on the wall and on the pitches, they have penises extended like this. Drawn like this. If all this, you can go see it. I mean, if you, if you want to stay out the glass, I'll put the film on so you can see it on the video tape. Or you get to catch the dead people when you come. You understand? I mean, I mean it's, not, it's not bold, it's not disgusting. It's, true. it's where they get their penis envy. It's why they told the German women that we had tests. <laughs> Did y'all know that, you young folks? Yeah. Yeah. That the Nubians go over there, they, they told them the black men had tails. When they came there, the white women were looking for the tails. <laughs> This is where that starts. And this is why here in the South, they didn't just hang and lynch your great grandfather and them, they also cast it. Because their greatest fear is our reproductive ability. That's why they say, oh, they produce like rats. That's why they always got to say the biggest mistake Michael Jackson could have been made in all his career was grabbing himself. They talked about that over and over and over. I grabbed himself, the Caucasian rapper, there's no mention of that. But just what Michael Jackson did, he was on his way from black to white, God is a big thing. All black men stand around holding stuff. All black men don't stand around holding stuff. And those who do all the stuff, they know you're trying to steal everything from us, you might steal that. <laughs> We have to get to the root of why we're hated, why we're abused. Because sometimes you sit home and say, what have I done to these people to make them treat me so bad? Right. Some of us love them more than we love ourselves. Right. Right. I call those people stretchers. Hello. Stretchers. You know what a stretch is? A sketch is a Nubian man or woman who takes their hair and stretches it back like this. I'm not going to stretch it. And as the sun starts to rise, and the, the, the natural curl goes. <laughs> but that's a sign that we love them more than we love ourselves. When we see a brother or sister with locks, we say, Falsely referred to as dreadlocks, but we should not dread our locks. Oh, right away, he must be some local, he must be some, but a whole bunch of stereotypes. When the brothers from Jamaica came home and tried to help you here in America, they thought he was Jerry on the back, walking down the street, and they the girls. And they told you about letting your hair go natural like a lion's mane. You got mad at him. Call them drug dealers and was going along with the system. And then they made a movie of Predator and they and said, see, the Predator got dragged. <laughs> That's all part of the subliminal destruction. Not subliminal seduction. Subliminal seduction is a lustful attack. Subliminal destruction is a mental attack. 